An academic conversation has been building as to whether Donald Trump is barred from running under a constitutional clause that prohibits those who engaged in an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution from holding higher office. Two law professors spent a year looking at the issue and are opining in a forthcoming 126-page law review article at the University of Pennsylvania that the preclusion does apply. You might remember that Ned Foley, a constitutional scholar at The Ohio State University, was recently my guest here making that case. There is, however, a difference of opinion among academics. Among the impediments to the applicability is the question of whether it would apply to a former president and the lack of any judicial finding that Trump has engaged in insurrection. In fact, among the 91 counts that Trump faces, none are for insurrection or sedition. He was impeached a second time by the House of Representatives for incitement of insurrection, but he was later acquitted by the Senate. There are also constitutional issues about denying a candidate ballot access and about denying voters their say. Ultimately, such a case might reach the Supreme Court. But guess who believes the 14th Amendment should not be applied? Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, yes, the recipient of what Trump calls a perfect phone call, as in this. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. That call was largely the predicate for the prosecution of Trump in Georgia. And yet, writing for the Wall Street Journal this week, Raffensperger argued the following. Mr. Trump might win the nomination and general election, or he could lose. The outcomes should be determined by the people who show up to make their preference known in primaries, including Georgia's on March 12th and the general election on November 5th, a process that denies voters their chance to be the deciding factor in the nomination and election process would erode the belief in our uniquely American representative democracy. Meanwhile, this week in Colorado, a progressive group filed a lawsuit to bar Trump from appearing on that state's primary ballot. The complaint was filed on behalf of six Republican and unaffiliated voters by a group called Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. The Colorado Secretary of State responded that she welcomed the guidance that the litigation would bring. In most states, the Secretary of State is the chief election official who can decide if a candidate is qualified to run for president in their state. Now, Colorado isn't the only state where there are active or potential steps to have Trump barred from running for office. Trump's lawyers responded yesterday requesting that a judge move the lawsuit to federal court because it cites a federal law, namely the 14th Amendment. So, four prosecutions underway that have been to Trump's political benefit at least in the short term. Now, a new challenge looms, which might have the same impact. My next guest is the Colorado Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, who also chairs the Democratic Association of Secretaries of State. She's been a sharp critic of former Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Thank you so much for being here. So as I referenced, Brad Raffensperger, he has your job in Georgia. He said it would be essentially un-American to remove Trump this way from the ballot. Do you agree with him? Well, um, not necessarily. So I, I read Brad's op-ed, um, and it does not cite Georgia law. It does not get into the, the Constitution itself. Uh, and I think it's a, a good political um, take. But ultimately, if the Constitution disqualifies the former president, we have to uphold the Constitution. So I, I wouldn't say Brad is right or wrong. I, I would say there are major constitutional questions and also questions of state law. And all of us have different state law that should be considered by a court. You know that much of this conversation springs from a forthcoming law review journal at your alma mater, the University of Pennsylvania Law School, mine too. Uh, have you read it? Do you agree with the conclusion? Are you of the opinion that Donald Trump should be precluded because of the 14th Amendment? I am of the opinion that this is a big constitutional question. Uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment clearly lays out that if someone swears to uphold the Constitution and then later engages in insurrection or rebellion or aid or comfort to the enemies of the Constitution, they cannot serve in office. Uh, you know, this amendment has been applied before, uh, namely during Reconstruction, when hundreds 
of former Confederate soldiers and office holders were removed. So there are some big questions. For example, uh, does the amendment bar someone who would be disqualified under it from running for office or just being seated in office? Who gets to make that decision? There's also questions about how to consider such disqualification under state law. Uh, so I am a, a big proponent of this needs to go and be decided by courts. And that's exactly what is happening in the state of Colorado. I hope this litigation gives guidance to myself, but also other secretaries of state across the nation. What if you're called upon to exercise discretion? You've been very critical of the former president during your victory speech, referencing him stealing the presidency or attempting to do so, the use of conspiracies and lies to incite an insurrection. If it comes down to, to authority placed in your hands, can you be fair to him? A absolutely. Uh, and I think um, being fair is considering the facts. Uh, you know, Donald Trump did incite an insurrection. He did try to steal the election from the American people. Now, that does not mean that at this point, a, a court would determine that that is disqualifying. And in terms of what would I do with discretion, you know, we're, we're not quite there. Uh, on top of these big state and constitutional questions, uh, there's also a process that has to play out. Uh, he has not even submitted his paperwork yet to get onto the ballot in Colorado. The Colorado Republican Party has not taken the steps that they need to for ballot access. So the question is premature. And, and what I hope is that a court will resolve some of these big outstanding questions before we get to ballot certification in December. Or not, Quick excuse final me, in question. January. You the paperwork is in December. Mm-hmm. Understood. Quick final question. You heard my commentary. I think I make a compelling case based on data about how each of the four indictments has been to his benefit politically and that I anticipate this challenge will do likewise. What's your thought on that? Uh, honestly, this isn't about the politics for me. My job as Secretary of State is to follow Colorado law and uphold the U.S. Constitution. I do agree that there's various ways to, to hold someone accountable. Crim criminal charges are about personally holding Trump accountable uh, for his actions in trying to steal the election and, and all the other actions he's taken. The American voters also will play a huge role. They've rejected this chaos in various elections, 2018, 2020, 2022. Uh, and I'm confident that the American people will once again uphold democracy, safeguard democracy, so that con this country continues to be one of a strong democracy going into the future. Jenna Griswold, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you.